Hey guys, it's me, Brandon Johnson. Today I'm going to take you for a ride on a big old twin engine 280C Ray Bow Rider. Let's go! What it really means to live like golden. Alright guys, once you got your boat in the water, just remember, the boat has to be in the water to run. It uses water to keep the engines cool. Okay? So I know you're keeping the boat on the lift, so when we deliver, we'll make sure we put our plug in, wrench it tight, and then you should be good to go. The only time you take that plug out is if the boat comes out of the water for service. So now, pretend with me, we lowered the lift, we've got the boat in the water, now we come back here. Inside this cabinet on the port side is our battery switches. This is our house battery. This is our engine batteries, okay? So we, when we go boating, we turn this to both. The alternator is going to charge all them batteries. If we're going to cove out, you know, drop anchor, listen to the radio, we can switch it to one or two. That way our stereo and such is isolated onto one battery. When we're done boating for the day, we just shut it off. So coming up to the helm, this is a twin engine boat, obviously. So a few things if the boat won't start. Click, 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 dead battery. If you turn the key and nothing happens whatsoever, your battery switch is either off or your shifters are right here. It says shift right on it. If these are in gear, it won't. It will not start. One thing I always tell people on twins with this style shifters, the split, make sure when you shut the boat off you're in neutral. Okay, some people, even I, have forgotten. I put it on the trailer, I put it in the dock, and I've got it in forward and I had shut it off, well, with these cables, there's a neutral safety switch in here. So without that neutral safety switch engaged, meaning the shifters being in neutral, the boat will not start. So if you shut it off in gear, you can get these in a bind, then you got to he-man it, and people just freak out because you have to literally force it back to neutral. Okay? Uh, from there, you just turn the key. If the boat hasn't been started in a while, you may have to just feather the gas right here a little bit. Feather, feather, feather. <laughs> But it fires up nicely. Now, right here in the middle, okay, that was the port side engine. Right here in the middle, it says emergency start. It's not really an emergency. It parallels the batteries to jump from one motor to the other. Didn't need it.
now, you got a bilge blower right here. You should use this. I can hear it on. I'm sure you can't, but I can hear it on. Uh, you can use this to ventilate the engine compartment. I strongly recommend if you just got gas or you're at idle to use that. Your shifters are right here. Forward, forward, neutral, neutral, reverse, reverse. Just like that. Very important for you to know. When you shift it, make sure your throttles are dead, okay? Dead throttles before you shift. I mean, that that sounds like, oh boy, is that bad? Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard on it. But anywhere you're docking a boat, typically you're not running 40 miles an hour to dock it. So you're going to be in slow speed anyhow. Like when I go to dock the boats, I always just come back to neutral until where I'm barely floating. And then from there, you know, I get my boat going straight while I'm in gear. Then I just use my shifters. I don't even touch a wheel anymore. So, kind of like you want your body. If you want your boat to go this way, you know, I'm going to push this one forward like this with my shoulder. If I want to bring this side back, I'll go ahead and pull this side back. And I just go in gear, out of gear. And with twin engines, you have so much lateral control, you can really move the boat anywhere, just like how I parallel parked it up to the dock. Now, I did have the wheel turned too far. That's why you want to go straight. But I was on the phone. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at our systems. Bilge pumps right here. Pumps out water. Horn. Wiper. Now, I barely hit that because those are made for a splash, not a rainstorm. Do you see how this little nut is on here? That's all that holds the wiper blade on. So I sold Sea Ray new for eight years. So back in my Sea Ray selling days, I learned that the hard way. Wiper came off, scratched the window. Water pump. Most people never use these here at the lake simply because that water sits in there and smells like raw sewage after a while. But if you want to use that, you fill it up and turn it on. This is the power engine hatch. Let's go ahead and raise that up. Take a look at the motors. You got twin 350 Mercs, very, very clean. Boat strapping on its own. One important thing I want to show you back here, uh, these motors have alarms for everything. About 90% of the alarms that go off on these is the gear lube container here and there. Here and here. If you're low on gear lube, just fill it up. Helps if you don't leave the one engine in gear when you're showing the engine. <laughs> Mercury high performance gear lift, that's what you get. I recommend keeping a cord in the boat. Now, depth finder. Buttons right here. It may take it a while to read if it reads. Oh, it works, I'll be damned. Compartment lights. Bilge lights, that's in the engine compartment. Cockpit lights are on the inside. Oh, down here, underneath my legs. It's easier to find them at nighttime, but it's on. I can see it on. Okay. If you're driving at nighttime, navigation lights. That's the red and green built up front, built into the boat, and the white light that plugs in the back. In the middle's off. All the way down is anchor light, stopped at night. This is a dimmer. When your nav lights are on, some of the gauges light up, not all of them, so you can use this to control how bright they are. Now, these are your trim tabs. They're for lateral stability on the outside edges of the boat. And from, I'll teach you how to work those. That'll be the second part of our test drive video. This is tilt and trim for the engines, right here. Okay? So this raises the out drives up. Right here. Can you see them good on the video? Yeah. And this brings them down. They both work. Very rare. Okay. Now, we got a bunch of gauges, so let me explain it. Speedometer. Now, these get clogged a lot because it's just a water pickup, a tiny little hole in one engine, okay? On one of the out drives. Water, it reads pressure through there. Now, once we do this V here, 
our two motors. Tachometers, fuel, voltage per side, engine temp per side, oil pressure per side, trim gauges per side. This right here, these never read just right, but it kind of tells you that right now I've got even throttle on each motor, okay? Which, good time to use that is when you're first starting the boat, because this will peg over. Here, let's shut one off. See how it pegs over? That means this engine's not on. I'm in gear. Just like that. Ah, you can see it. Okay. Um, this is the ship to shore radio. No one ever uses it. Your CD player's right here. Uh, this is your remote spotlight. I'll be damned. We're batting a hunt a thousand. Wrong way use that to spy on good looking chicks on the dock at night. Just joking. Maybe I'm joking, maybe I'm not. So it's got a new CD player in it. Right here. There you go. We could use some better speakers, but it sounds alright. Okay. Before I take off, I'm going to take the camera from Billy, okay? Alright guys, this is the easy part, because anybody can drive the boat up and down the lake all day. Docking, maneuvering, that's what takes some practice. So, I'm always trimmed down. I want to take off trimmed down. This, is boat, this boat is big, heavy. You know, it's 6,000 something pounds, almost 7, and 9 foot 6 inches wide. 30... 31 foot 2 inches roughly with the swim platform, 27 and a half without it. Um, so trim down. See how my gauges are trimmed down? Now this is a you know a big boat with single prop stern drives. So I'm just gonna kind of ease it up. I'm just gonna walk it. Oh good, this one has the clicks in it. So you can just click it, click it, click it, click it. I mean it's a twin engine boat, sure. So it's got plenty of speed. But you have to remember, it's a big bow rider. It's too wide to be a performance boat. So I just kind of slowly come on to plane, and it planes extremely smooth. Our tacks are in line. Our seat gauge is in line. Trimmed all the way down. Runs strong and smooth. We're running about 30 miles an hour. It's nice, comfortable cruise speed right here, trimmed down. But I've got to run the boat a lot harder than this to show you how the boat operates under a load. So let's go ahead and hammer down. Here we're wrapping out. So I'm going to run at full speed, trim down, then I'm going to trim up. This thing runs solid. I'm not even touching the wheel. Alright, now let's go ahead and trim up. I'm bringing the odd drives up. See my gauges? See my speed increasing? So upper 40s is going to be our top end. Right there. Around 4,800 to 5,000 RPM. So let's trim back down. This thing runs. This thing runs strong. Okay, now we're we're gonna talk about how to operate the tilt and trim. So when you're going slow, this is on your outdrives right here. You want to trim down. When you go to dock, trim down. The only time you'll trim up is if you want to go faster. Now I'll I'll actually include a link in the video to how to operate tilt and trim effectively, so that we don't make this video an hour long. So in the description below the video, if you just click down below the video, I have a whole entire video dedicated to how to operate tilt and trim. So turn sharp, by the way. But what I don't have a separate video on is how to operate trim tabs. So these are made for lateral stability right here. Okay? So if you got heavy people on the boat, you can level it out. But my intention is just to show you that they work. Okay? So I'm just going to do the port side down. 
not touching the steering wheel. See how the boat's turning now? Turning one direction. Right here. Now if we watch, I'm not touching the wheel. See how it straightens back out? So that tells you the port side tab works. Now we'll do starboard side. See the boat turning again? One more time, I am not touching the wheel. Now we know they both work. All right, boat runs awesome. Can't fault it. I'm gonna give this back to video to record me just a little longer on the difference between tilt trim and trim tab. I wanted to include this in the video because when you're driving, you know, it's, it's exciting. You're seeing the gauges work. You're looking for everything, seeing how it's working. If everything's nice and even, which it is. I mean, the boat runs strong. So I'm never worried about the boat running strong because we check them out so good. This one just impresses me a little bit. So I want to slow this down a little bit because if I can do a better job of explaining how to operate the boat, it's only going to enhance your ownership experience. So that being said, one more time, trim tabs, the flappers on the side of the boat, they're made for lateral stability or to correct lateral instability. So if you have heavy friends on one side, just double click it like a computer mouse. So if heavy friends are on one on this side, naturally a boat's gonna lean their way. So double click this side of the boat, one, two, and level it out. Only touch these if you're going straight. You may even pick something in front of you to use as a reference. If you're turning when you're touching these, it's gonna mess you all up. Now, let's say that that heavy friend comes over to give me a kiss or to tell me what a great dude I am. About 10 seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we'll bring them all the way up because people are going to move. It's going to happen. Uh, now, let's say it's rough as sin on the water. Waves are choppy. It's just annoying. You know, get the boat on plane. Obviously, in the video, like I showed you, planes and cruises smooth at 30 miles an hour. Just go ahead and put them both down all the way. Put them both down all the way and it drags the boat, okay? Drags because it pulls water in the back. So it forces that nose over and just runs flat. Instead of slamming and slapping, it's just going to plow through the rough waves. It's not a very efficient way to cruise from a fuel economy, some shit like that, fuel standpoint. But it will make a day that's miserable in terms of the water being rough and make it very smooth and make you very comfortable and confident. Um, this boat, my, my wife's calling me, this boat uh, has a bimini top, it's back at the shop, when we transport them we actually roll the carpet up, we take the bimini out, we roll the covers up, up, we store them all away, stow them all away, anything that could bend, break, shake, or fly out, I'm going to take out, okay? That's the part of this process that some people get a little frustrated with when they get their boat, it's dirty and it's not put together. But I assure you, you'd be a lot more disappointed if half the stuff in the boat was missing when you got it. Okay? So, we're going to go put this back on trailer. I'm going to do a walk-around video of the outside, walk-around video of the inside, throw these together, and send them to you. I appreciate it. Alright, climbed above your boat here. My shoes are a little dirty. So, the vinyl's in great shape. I mean, one thing to remember... The boat's a 97, but, man, from an expectation standpoint, it's... It's really nice. So back here, you can lift this up, and then this center cushion just comes out, which gives you a walk-through transom, okay? Just like that. Now, let's take a hard look at the vinyl. Go ahead and shut this one first. We've had some rain, so I've got some specks of dirt on it, but nothing bad. The carpet is newer, within a couple years old, I'm going to say, because it's in really nice shape. And it's, I mean, it's factory, what C-Ray would have used from a color standpoint. So you got storage. My guys cleaned all these out. Storage. Sink. We put a trash can underneath this. That's supposed to be a cooler. Double wide helm seat with bolster. Now this does slide back and forth. And the bolster flips down and up. So, now this is really something nice. How nice the dash panels are. I mean, the boat was always lift kept, so they're not faded or the buttons look nice. You can still read all the lettering, lettering perfectly on it. Looking it down. 858 and 871 on the hours. Okay, you have a great big ski storage on the floor right here. Thank you. 
ginormous. So this is a two-way door. It'll open and then you can use one to block the wind like this. And this one just stays shut so it doesn't whistle in here and this is where you put ropes. There's a little closet in there, amp for the stereo and your, your night light. It plugs in the back. Coming up into the bow. Storage in the headrest. Vinyl's in exceptional shape. This has been redone. Almost every 280C ray I've ever had will uh, split back there. So it's been redone. There's a cooler underneath it. Slot looks good. Anchor locker there. Got the vinyl. A few bonuses that I didn't realize on this boat. It's got uh, bow filler cushions. So you can make the bow into a big sun pad. It also has aft filler cushions. So you can make that into a sun pad. In the head here are the cushions. It's got enclosures. There's a pump out toilet. You have shore power. So you got battery charger and outlets if you wanted to use like a shop vac to clean inside the boat. Back to back seats, storage below. That's where your battery switches are. So I mean the boat's in great shape. I had some uh, a couple little tears fixed on the cockpit cover that snaps on. It's actually in the back seat of my truck. So that's a big jump, but let's jump down. So drives are in great shape. Props look nice. Let's see. Extended swim platform. So hopefully this will focus in. There. So it's got a couple little chips right here where the ladder goes. And on the platform. Port side's in really nice shape. There's where the shore power plugs in right there. There's one gel coat spot right there that's had kind of a cheap fix. Tiny one right there. The hull's in beautiful shape. See our lake's a flooded river so it's very difficult to beat, bruise, or abuse the hull of a boat here. It's also never been trailer kept. That's why the nose is in such good shape. The stem. That's what my gel coat guy would tell me to call it. Come around the starboard side. We got her polished up after we took the graphics off. That was my beef with making the video. There's a little gel coat spot there. A little one here. That'll wipe off. It's just from a buoy. And a little one there. So you've seen... Everything that I've seen, I've tried to be your eyes and ears the best I can. I feel good about it. I hope you're happy. Models, popping bottles. Hey.